Good morning, guys. What is up? And welcome back to the channel. It has been a while since I filmed a video, but we're out here in Galveston Bay today. Gonna be throwing on the waders, doing a little bit of wintertime wade fishing for hopefully some big old speckled trout. That is the plan. Like I said, it's been a while since I filmed a video. I've had a messed up knee that I'm just now getting better from. Uh, I've been sick a couple different times this past month, and yeah, just haven't been able to get out here. So I'm excited to be out here today. It's absolutely beautiful. No wind at all, pretty much blowing zero, and I don't think it's supposed to blow more than like five or six all day, maybe six or seven, but right now it is glassed off. The weather's about 60 degrees and there's not a cloud in the sky. So anyways, though, I hope all you guys had a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I'm excited to see what we have in store for the channel this year. Y'all stick with it, stay tuned. Let's get all the gear together and hop out on the water and see if we can catch some fish. Brand new waders guys it's been a while i've been rocking with the same pair of leaky waders actually two pairs of leaky waders for like a year just getting out of the water and being completely soaked so this is gonna be nice i'm super excited to actually fish and then stay warm and stay dry but we're gonna like i said we're gonna throw these on and then we're gonna start heading out here we have a pretty long wade this morning it's honestly probably half a mile if not a little bit more just to get to the spot where we start fishing uh we can't work this grass line on the way and right over here if you turn the camera that way I don't know if you can see, but right up on that grass one right there, there's just so much bait coming out. So maybe there'll be a redfish or two up against this grass. I mean, you can see all the ripples in the water. Okay, we just hopped in the water. Y'all check out how clear it is. Now we're in West Galveston Bay, and typically in the winter, West Galveston Bay gets super clear, just like it is right now. So this can make the fishing quite difficult sometimes. You definitely gonna need a leader for this. You know, a lot of times when the water is dirty, you find that clear water, you find the fish. When the water is clear, you find the little stained off-colored water, find the fish that way. But I love it when it's clear like this because there's usually a ton of stingrays out here, but we should be able to see them today. You can see all the bait pods out here. There was one right here that moved off. See all those, but we're just going to get on the shoreline and just start hiking down. It's going to be a long walk. Hopefully we'll be able to get there in 20 minutes, but I'm going to show you one of my favorite winter lures right now. This is a Lil John right here. I don't know what the color is exactly, but I think it's just salt and pepper flake or whatever like that. Pretty much clear with, like I said, salt and pepper flakes. So, little black flakes in it. Absolutely beautiful morning. We got Caleb back there. He's super slow. Maybe he'll catch up, but we got a long walk. Hopefully, some fish to catch. Let's get after it. Alright guys, we're walking up. There's a swirl up here with the tail out of the water. And then here's the weight coming out. So it ran off on us, but it's somewhere out here. I can't cast that far. We're going to get up here and maybe make a couple blind casts and see if we can get that thing to bite. Oh, it's right there. Oh yeah, there's a ton of them. I can't cast that far. Ah, oh, the fish are running from the shell. Damn, seems like we were just 30 seconds late. It's a good sign they're already seeing a fish. That definitely had to have been a red. Big swirls and a big white coming straight off the shore. All right, y'all, so we've walked down the shoreline uh, quite a ways, five, 600 yards at least. And now we're gonna start making our way out to the reef because we are fishing a deep oyster reef out here. So this is a spot I come to a lot in the winter. If you've been watching the channel for a while, then you probably recognize it. Uh, basically what we have is we have this grass shoreline back here with a little flat, about knee deep, gradual slope off to about waist deep out here. And then there's just a very deep hole that's about 10 to 11 feet deep. And then on the other side of the hole, there's this oyster reef that comes up and it kind of forms a little peninsula and you can walk out on it. And so we're just gonna sneak up on here and fish where that deep water meets the reef. The reef is actually only about knee deep. Where it drops off into that deeper water is a lot of times where those trout will be laying. So we're just gonna try to find them out here. Uh, just a bunch of scattered oyster and yeah, it should be pretty good. But yeah, one thing that's very important when targeting big trout, really just any trout, any fish really, is to not crunch the shell. 
So whenever you're walking up on a reef, cast your way up to it. Don't just walk straight up to the reef and start casting. A lot of times those fish are not sitting directly on top of it, but, but they're sitting to the sides of it, where that oyster is scattered. Now the reason I really like this spot in the winter, I forgot to say, is because of that deeper water. Those fish will go down in those holes to stay warm and they come up and feed on the reefs or feed on these flats in the afternoon or whenever. Like right now we've had a warming trend for about a week. It's going to be 70 degrees today, so I don't expect them to be sitting way deep down the holes. The water is pretty warm right now to be honest. And I think they're going to be out a little bit shallower. So we're going to target that three to four foot depth. And if we need to, there's just so many options right here. We have a boat channel that runs on that side. So it's just, just tons of deep water, guys. And channels and stuff like that are just fish highways. The fish is using them to cruise along and pop up on the edges of flats and everything to feed throughout the day. So it's really just a prime spot for what you're looking for in the winter. Deep water, a little bit of mud down in the holes, and then oyster, just everything that holds warmth. Really just, like I said, exactly what you're looking for. Hey guys, this feels like a decent fish. Bunch of bait over here. I wonder, this feels like a nice trout. Dude, this is a nice fish. I don't know what this is. It's either a big trout or a redfish. Dude, I think it's a monster trout. Oh, no, is that a red? It's a red. Or is it a big trout? No, redfish. I told you I saw tails over there. Guys, I saw some stuff over there. Oh, he ain't ready. I'm just gonna grab him. Now that I know it's not a big trout, I would like to catch this redfish, but still. Guys, I saw tails over here and a bunch of uh, swirling. Cast it that way, let it sink, and boom, we got a nice red here. And this guy will be going on the stringer. If he's keeper, which I believe he will be 20. He just doesn't want to stop. Yeah, I might as well net him. Boom! Thank you. First fish of 2023 here. A nice, probably close to 20 inch redfish. We'll see if he makes it. There you go, that boy is beautiful. Get a measurement. Hey! That's gonna be 20 inches. There we go, guys. Beautiful. That's an officially caught fish. Popped his lure right out of his mouth. And all I did, guys, is we're working our way up to the reef. The reef is out there, you can see the pole. And there's a deep hole right here. Like I said, that deep hole. And it kind of turns like this, like a horseshoe shape. And I just cast into the edge of that deep hole and they were, it was laying right on there. So one more measurement on them. Yes, sir. Solid 21 inch redfish, that's the best keeper size. He's on the string, that thing's going home, and thank you God, what a way to start 2023. Fishing season. Wow, awesome. So I wanna to explain to y'all how we work these lures real quick. So, a lure like this without a paddle tail, and most lures without paddle tails, have a tendency to come out of the water when working them. They like to come and jump out of the water. So you gotta work them a little bit slower, and what I like to do, is I like to let it sink all the way down and peck the bottom with it. Just imagine that lure down here. This is the bottom and that lure is just going back and forth. And it's just knocking up dirt as it goes. A lot of times those fish are sitting a lot lower during the winter, at least that's what I found, hugging the warmth off the bottom. So as you can see, you can just do one pop. I like to do one and then two. And just short little twitches, not that summertime in the surf pop, but just a nice little, little. And you're just feeling for every little thing. Those bites can be a lot more subtle in the winter. And you got to be able to feel and get that hook set. So we're going to take a few more casts on the edge of this hole. And then we're going to continue to work towards that reef. So we're approaching the reef right now. And all we're doing is just making super long casts towards it as far as we can. Because we don't want to spook any of those fish. We don't want to go stomp on any of the oyster or anything. We want our lures to get there before we do. So we can pick anything off that's sitting around it. Like I said earlier, you don't know where they're sitting. They could be sitting 15 yards off the reef, or they could be sitting right on top. But we're just going to make long casts until we feel that oyster, and I feel it already. And we'll just pick around. This reef is right here, comes out to a little peninsula right here, and then just runs all the way over here and all the way up to that channel marker. It's pretty big, but the main part's right there where you see the marker. And that's going to do it right there for this lure. Snip off that frayed line. We'll just stash this one in the pocket for later.
All right, let's go into the goodie bag and see what we got. There we go, brand new. I really like this color. I don't know what any of these colors are called, but it's like a dark greenish one, green sides. It's a nice color, looks good in the water. And then besides this one, just really any of their natural colors look good. But we'll throw this around. I've had good luck on this color before here. We're just gonna tie a little loop. So when I tie these, I like to tie a little loop down in the front. So we're just gonna do a typical overhand knot right there. Run it through the front and then just continue with the fishing knot. Boom, boom. And there we go. Now we have a loop in the front that's going to give this bay a little bit more action and uh, hopefully entice those fish to bite. Give it a little more natural look. Okay, and then what I like to do is you take this. People bend them all different ways, but I just like to bend the tail down just like that. Looks good, let's see. In the water. Oh, it looks great. That little side-to-side -side flick action. And now the thing that you'll see a lot of people do with these is that they pop it way too hard. They'll do something like that. And it makes the bait just look very unnatural. And really all you have to do is just give it a tiny little twitch. You're basically working on covering water super slow with these things, putting it right in front of the fish. If you just go ahead and pull right away from them, they're probably not going to hit it. So just super small twitches is all it needs and it just kind of comes up, as you can see, and flutters back down. Let's go ahead and give it a cast. This is just a slow sinking twitch bait. Look at that guy. Alright, we got a trout guys. Finally, been out here for hours. Like, I just now noticed the uh, tide kind of moving a little bit. Whenever you cast out, the lure would end up over there. And just hooked this nice trout. Nah, he's, he's not. I don't even think he's a keeper. But it's a nice trout because it is my first one of the year. Little guy, but that is a great sign. Yeah. Dang, I thought he was way bigger than that, to be honest. I thought he was at least 16, but pretty little trout right there. Look at him. Let's get him released. Swims off to live another day. Now let's see if we can catch his older brother or something to take home. There we go, finally. Oh, dude, that is a keeper trout. Let's go, guys. We have not caught a fish in an hour and a half or two hours. I make a cast, catch one. You make a cast right after, catch one. I think we might be on something. Let's it's see. A keeper too. Let's go. That's baby. a nice keeper. There we go, guys. All right, so I just caught that one little one. Caleb just caught a keeper right here. And I mean, it was back to back. So maybe the fish will start biting. We fished this whole area, like I just said. I moved back over there, fished that area again, then came back and we fished again, and boom, two fish. So we're gonna see. Maybe there's a school or something just moving up on the reef, starting to warm up, tide's starting to move a little bit. Maybe they'll move up. It's also really important, guys. I do wanna know, usually whenever people catch a fish, the next couple casts after that they get excited and they'll start working their lure way quicker whenever the secret is to just slow down because that's when those fish bit or that's whenever you got that buyer whenever you caught that fish is whenever you're working it slow okay so we just caught those fish fish for about 10 more minutes no other bites what we're gonna do is we're gonna work our way off the reef as you can see i'm on it right now look how shallow and clear it is we're gonna work our way off of this we're gonna go down here 50 60 70 yards pop back over and then fish the really thick oyster out there on our way back and see if there's some trout laying up there and then we'll end up back to where we were and we'll fish that spot again but we're gonna try something a little bit new and man it's super clear over here might try casting the deep hole real quick but yeah that's the plan let's see if it works out all right, we're about halfway through with our wade, and Caleb just hooked up to something on the voodoo shrimp. Let's see what it is. Oh, oh, dude, get the net. That's a big one. A fat trout. Let's go, baby. Nice, dude. And the hook's out. Perfect. Hey, that's a quick release. Let's that's go. perfect. 
That's a good one. Damn, that's a fat one. He's only like 17 inches, but look how fat he is. Yeah, no, that's definitely Holy a keeper, crap. though. Oh, absolutely. On the stringer. Hope that got caught on camera. A little trout. Man, I was just saying I haven't had a trout thump in a while. And I still haven't because he didn't thump it at all. It was just heavy and started swimming with it. There we go, y'all. A little trout. Boom. So it's about 11.30. We've been out here all morning. I'll show y'all the stringer right here. We got that one nice redfish, and then Kayla put two nice trout on the stringer. I have not caught any keeper trout, only two undersized, but hey, I figured this was a good time to tell y'all on a beautiful sunny day like this, I haven't been squinting at all, and that's because I got on these nice Waterland sunglasses. So if you want to check out Waterland, I'll have it linked down below, but it's waterlandco.com, and you can use code B4 to get 15% off of anything on their website. So like I said, I haven't been squinting at all. Caleb behind the camera, he doesn't have any sunglasses on right now, and he's been looking like this all day. So cast out here that wind's starting to pick up it's getting warm and then we're gonna head back to the truck and like i said this is gonna be a catch and cook i'll see y'all back in the house to clean this redfish and cook it up for you guys all right what is up y'all and welcome back and we're in the kitchen right now so i have that redfish cleaned up if you would like to see a video on how to fillet redfish or how to fillet the speckled trout leave a comment down below and i'd love to make that for you guys but i just went ahead and did it earlier today so we we're ready to start cooking so like i said we're in the kitchen as you can see we're gonna be making a recipe that I think is gonna be absolutely delicious. It's something that I have never made on the channel and I actually just never made it in my whole life. So today we're gonna to be making a Thai yellow fish curry. Now, we have this little Thai restaurant down the road not too far away that we go to and every time I go over there, I get the yellow curry and it is just amazing. So I wanna to try to make it for myself. Now, over there I usually get the chicken, but like I said, today we're gonna to be using fish because we went out and caught these redfish. So we're gonna go ahead and cut this fish up and all I'm gonna do is just cube it. So we're gonna cut right there. We're just gonna get little bite-sized pieces. We'll probably cut like that, there. And we're just gonna start cubing, so. You wanna do this with a firm fish because it is kind of like a, a soup consistency that we're gonna end up with, but anything like that, don't make it too small. And if you have a fish that's not firm, it's probably just gonna flake apart in the pan. So I'm thinking redfish is gonna be good for this recipe because it is a little bit firmer and it should stay in the cubes. And these are about perfect size. I'm gonna finish cutting this up. As you can see, I already have all the vegetables chopped up. We have some diced potatoes, some carrots cut up, some shallots sliced right here, and then some limes that we're gonna be using. So once I finish cubing up this fish, we'll just start throwing everything in the pan. Like I said, I really have no idea what I'm doing, so we're just gonna be going right off the dome. I looked up a couple recipes, watched a video or two, and we're just gonna see what happens. Y'all stay tuned. So the other ingredients you're gonna need for this is obviously the yellow curry, as you can see right there, some coconut milk, some fresh garlic, some fresh ginger, some sugar, you can use white or brown sugar, some turmeric just for color, a little bit of chicken broth, and then like I said, you have your limes, and then some basil to garnish it. First thing we're gonna do is turn our stove onto some medium high heat, about six or seven. Then we're gonna add in a little bit of oil. Now we're gonna let that get hot. Once that gets hot, we're gonna go in with those onions and then straight in with the curry paste. Oil's hot, we're gonna go in with our shallots right here. Just gonna dump them all in. We're making a pretty big recipe here because I bought double of everything. So we're gonna go in with the shallots, we're gonna let these saute for about two to three minutes. Once they start getting tender, then I'm gonna add in some minced garlic and minced ginger. We'll throw that in there, let that saute for about a minute, let the aromatics start to come out of there, and then straight in with the curry paste. This is yellow curry paste, we got it at HEB. I'm sure you can find it pretty much anywhere, probably a bunch of different brands, but this is just the one I picked up right there because they didn't have anything else. So, now it says that you're only supposed to use like a tablespoon or two, but since I'm making a big recipe, I'm gonna be honest. I want the flavor, I want all the spice, I want all that. We're gonna go with the whole thing and see what happens. Okay, the shallots are turning translucent right there. We're gonna go ahead and add the rest of the ingredients. First, let's go with our garlic. Nice scoop of that straight to the pot. And we're gonna go with all of our ginger. Give that a nice stir and let it come together. We only want to do this for about 30 seconds to a minute because we don't want that garlic and ginger to burn. Next thing we're going to add is the curry paste. So let's go ahead and scoop some out. 
And guys, I've never had any other type of curry besides yellow curry, but I can tell you right now, okay, it's only about three scoops, not that much. But I can tell you right now, yellow curry has a really nice sweetness to it, and it's not too spicy. So we're gonna add that in there. We're gonna stir it around for a minute, get everything mixed together, and then we're gonna go straight in with some coconut milk. This is a super thick coconut milk. And from what I've seen, they say that you add just a little bit at the beginning, like that. Mix that around with your curry and let it come together. And then we're gonna add the rest of that, the chicken stock to thin it out, and then all of our vegetables so they can start cooking. So it's been a little bit here. It's time to add all the milk. So we're gonna add the rest of the coconut milk right here. And I did turn down the pot a little bit so it doesn't burn. We're gonna go with the rest of the coconut milk. And then to thin that out, we're gonna add some chicken stock to it. You can use water too is what I've seen, but we'll add about half this can of chicken stock. Actually, nah, we'll go for the full can. There we go, about equal parts. And I do have another coconut milk, so if this thins it out too much, then I'll add the other coconut milk and thicken it back up. Or I guess we could add cornstarch and water. Come take a look at this. This is what we're looking at right, right now. So we're just gonna start, let everything come together, and now I'll add a couple more seasonings I have, and then we add all the vegetables and just let that stew and let those vegetables cook down. Now, whenever I've had this at the Thai restaurant, the potatoes and carrots are always a little bit al dente. I think it's really good. So we're not gonna let it stew for too long, maybe 20, 25 minutes and it should be done. The next thing I'm gonna add is a little bit of turmeric. Now you don't have to add this. I just saw that people add this to give it a little more color. Even though it's super orange, I guess this is gonna do something to it. So we'll add a little bit of that, not much flavor. And then we're gonna add some sugar. Sweeten it up a little bit, kind of balance out those flavors. So we'll add our white sugar. You can use brown sugar too. I don't think I need all of it. Actually, might as well, who cares? Stir that up for a second, and you can come take a look at it right now. It definitely is looking good. Looking yellow here, if we let it sit, what I've already noticed is that that orange color comes up to the top super fast. Next thing we're gonna do is add our vegetables, and we're gonna add our vegetables before our fish. If we were making chicken or whatever, I'd go ahead and add the chicken because it's probably gonna take about the same amount of time to cook as this, but fish cooks super quick. We're basically gonna be simmering or boiling the fish in this soup and this broth, and that should only take, I'd say, 10 to 12 minutes. So let's go ahead and add the vegetables. I'm not gonna add all of them because it is quite a bit. We'll add about half the potatoes and the carrots. I want more potatoes and carrots, so. And that should be perfect. It's starting to look just like the restaurant. The last thing I'm gonna put in here before I put the lid on and let it simmer is a little bit of lime juice. So we're gonna go in, I'm just gonna squeeze one lime. I'm not gonna squeeze it to death. Let's try to get some of that juice out of there. This is really gonna freshen it up. Leave it on about medium heat right there. Put the lid on it, set a timer for about 10 to 15 minutes. And then when that goes off, I'll come add the fish, let it go for about 10 more minutes, and then we're ready to eat, y'all stay tuned. It's been about 10 to 12 minutes here, and it's looking good, y'all check that out. Vegetables are starting to get tender. Let's go ahead and add the fish. Those vegetables are gonna continue to cook after we add the fish, of course. So we'll go ahead and add this in, and then it should all come together perfectly. As you can see, my chunks are about, I'd say they're about an inch, so. If you're cooking any fish like this, not just with curry, but I don't recommend stirring it too much after you add the fish. The more you stir it, the more that fish is gonna break apart. We want it to stay in those chunks. So we'll add all that in there. That's one 21 inch large fish, perfect eater size. You can take a look right here. We're just gonna lightly fold it in, get it covered in that sauce so we can start to cook. A little bit more. While it's raw, you can start a little bit. Okay, just like that. We're gonna put the lid back on it, start the timer for 12 more minutes, and then we'll be ready to eat it. We're gonna heat up a little bit of rice before we serve it because we are gonna serve this with some rice on the side, and I think it's gonna be delicious. So 12 minutes and we'll check on it. So here we are, roughly 25 to 30 minutes from start to finish. And y'all take a look at this soup. It's looking good. The fish is done. Stayed together very nicely. Beautiful color to it. Let's go ahead and serve it up here. All I'm gonna do is grab a little bowl, just like this. Take a scoop from the bottom so we can get some of those onions in there. Try to get some potatoes and stuff, carrots. And then we're gonna add our, we'll add some broth here. 
and we'll top it off with one more scoop of the broth. And it is pretty thin. I should have probably added a little bit of uh, cornstarch and water, but we'll stick with that. Okay, let's put a little garnish on this and we'll throw it on the plate. And that right there is dinner. We got a side of rice, we got some limes on it, garnished it with a little bit of basil and some raw onion, because every time I get it, it always has some raw onion in it. So it looks amazing. Let's sit down and give this a taste. We're gonna, I don't know the proper way to eat it. What I always do is just take some, throw it over the rice, get down in there. That looks good. One more look at it. You can see that beautiful color. A little more orange than yellow. Every time I get it at the Thai restaurant, it's super yellow. So if any of y'all out there know how to make this and make it more yellow, let me know. I'm sure the flavor will still be great, but all right, we're gonna go with the taste just the broth right now. Super hot. Flew it all over my finger, but wow, that's amazing. That right there already, without even tasting the fish. Okay, wait, hold on. We'll taste the fish, just to make it fair. Yep, exactly what I was gonna say. That is a top three recipe for the channel right now. After the 150 whatever, 150 plus catch and cook videos, this is top three. It's unbelievable. Who cares about chicken noodle soup? If I'm sick, I want yellow curry, guys. This is amazing. So we're gonna get another bite here. I'm gonna definitely finish this whole entire bowl. But I wanna say thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for sticking with the channel. Welcome to the new year. I'm excited to see what the new year has in store for the channel. That's it for today's video. Thanks so much for watching. And until next time, peace.